Hey friends, Sarah here with The Holy Mess and Faithful Finish Lines. And this is video number two of Rapid Style um, Weight Loss Questions Answered. We had so much fun at the last one um, that, and so many questions that came in that this is video number two. Now, if you are watching this live on June 25th, we are having a 50% off flash sale on our Weight Watchers Toolkit, which is a digital kit that gives you tons of really great stuff if you follow the Weight Watchers program. If you don't follow Weight Watchers, this is not for you. It is really only for people who either are doing Weight Watchers program, um, the program itself, or like following Weight Watchers principles online on their own, like with the app iTrack Bites. But it is awesome. I put together all of my printable Weight Watchers resources. There's several ebooks in there. There's menu plans. There's a zero point recipe book. Um, hello. Um, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks that are all zero points. It's awesome. Um, I've got an ebook in there where I go through like everything for how to be successful with Weight Watchers. So if you're doing Weight Watchers, you're going to want to get that kit. It is 50% off if you use the um, coupon code WWSALE50. So again, it's WWSALE50. And we'll put the link um, on this video when I'm done recording it. So that's just 48 hours. So I know some of you watch these videos later, but that's today and tomorrow if you're watching this live. Also, make sure you check out our Faithful Finish Lines membership. If you are someone who really is ready to take a deep dive into weight loss, you want to lose the weight, keep it off, and keep Christ at the center, that is the program for you. Okay, I got 10 minutes to do 10 questions. Let's do this. So number one, Kayla C. asked, does your eating look different in maintaining versus weight loss? My general answer would be no. Whatever you do to lose weight is what you have to do to maintain it. So my, what I eat today is very similar to what I ate at the beginning of the program, but I will also say there are some differences. First of all, I eat a lot less. I know this isn't fun, but this is a reality of weight loss. When you are a heavier person, your body burns more calories. As you get lighter, your body does not burn as many calories. So um, I eat less food. My body needs less food. And then the second thing is I eat a lot cleaner now. When I first started, I ate what I call healthy junk food. So skinny cow ice cream cream sandwiches, um, Jolly Time, you know, microwave popcorn and um, snack wells. That was back in the day. 100 calorie packs of like chips and cookies. And uh, hey, you know, you do what you got to do to get through it and to get the calories down. And so I don't, you know, say anything bad about that I did that. But as I've gotten better at this, I've just learned that I feel so much better when I eat healthier. So now it's really um, protein, vegetables. That's like the majority of what I eat is protein and vegetables and um, healthy fat and some carbs in there and then some treats. You know, sometimes I just have some chocolate because I want chocolate. All right, number two, Kayla C. also, she said, did you exercise at first and did your exercise change over time during weight loss and maintaining? Oh, heck yeah. So when I first started, I didn't exercise at all, not one single bit. I lost the first 40 pounds doing no exercise at all. Then I added walking. Then I started going to the gym and I worked with a personal trainer. Then um, I decided to do the Couch to 5K program, which was like crazy for me because I'd never done anything like that. I hated to run, um, but I did and I was able to do it, which shocked me. So I signed up for a 5K. Then I did another 5K. Then I did a half marathon and another one. And then I did triathlons and um, ended up loving triathlons, even though it was super scary for me. I I had to relearn how to swim. Um, I had to be pulled out of the water in a boat because I had a panic attack multiple times. Um, swimming still not my favorite today. Um, and then I kind of retired from triathlon and moved on to really focusing on Taekwondo. I'm a Taekwondo black belt now. I practice together with my sons and I walk and I run and I go to the gym. I think strength training is a big deal. So that was a huge progression and very motivating to me. But I would also say it actually made weight loss more challenging, especially during the triathlon years because the more you eat or the more you exercise, the hungrier you get. And it can be really easy to overshoot your calories. So I actually weigh less now doing less intense exercise than when I was doing doing triathlons. Okay, number three is from Mary L. And she says, do you know how much your daily encouragement encourages others? Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. This just, this just gave me a little happy heart when you said that. 
Um, number four is from Terry S. And she says, how do you deal with stress and not lead to food? Oh, I so get you. So I was a tremendously huge stress eater, a binge eater, a compulsive overeater. I was afraid to feel my feelings. And for me, it took therapy to learn to feel my feelings. Now, if this is something you're interested in, especially if you have a faith focus, I really encourage you to check out Faithful Finish Lines 2.0. And I see Starla is on here. Starla, if you could put the link to our Faithful Finish Lines 2.0 membership too. And she's put the link to the toolkit, which is awesome. But that's 50% off right now. Um, we go really deep into this. We have a 10-stage program that takes about a year. And one of the stages, so a whole month or longer, is just on emotional eating. But for now, now, what I would encourage you to do is to start to think about your, your thoughts, which lead to your feelings, which lead to your behaviors. So for me, I was so afraid to feel my feelings. I was in denial that I would turn to food and start to recognize your thoughts and recognize your feelings and that you can deal with those without turning to food. That one's a tough one to answer in one minute. Also from Terry S, she says, how do you get accountability through the pandemic with Weight Watcher sites not being opened? I know, it's really hard, isn't it? Everything's closed. For me, um, it's not so much the Weight Watchers because I do Weight Watchers online, but I really miss going to the gym. <laughs> I miss my Taekwondo classes in their regular form. We're doing some outside, but it's just not the same. So you definitely need to build accountability into your weight loss. It's so important. We have lots of great resources online. I have a Weight Watchers Facebook group. I have a Christian Weight Loss Facebook group that are totally free. There's tons of Weight Watchers Facebook groups out there. Um, you can do the virtual meetings with Weight Watchers. Again, if you're interested in faithful finish lines, we have lots of accountability built in, but you definitely need some type of accountability. I think for me, because I've been doing this for so long, that definitely helps. But doing faithful finish lines is a great accountability for me. I track every single day my Weight Watchers points. I'm very, very faithful to that. Uh, Melissa said, how have you seen the discipline it requires to lose weight benefit other aspects of your life? This is such an interesting question. It really made me think, um, and I hadn't thought of it in this way before. I definitely had self-discipline before. I mean, this was one of the things that I struggled with so much because it was like, I have it together, you know, as much as any of us does, but in so many other areas of my life, why can't I get it together with food? But I was really turned to food to manage my emotions so I, I, I definitely have developed self-discipline self-control with God's guidance so I would say I've just really seen my faith grow which has influenced all aspects of my life it's not that I've suddenly developed more willpower or more self-control it's more about God working in me and the other thing I would say is um, I've learned that organization and structure are really helpful for me, and I just embrace that instead of being against it or thinking it means like I'm a nerd or something. I just totally embrace that that is what makes me successful. Okay, Lynn asks, what was your go-to meal? So when I first started, um, I was definitely a volume eater because I was a binge eater, a compulsive overeater, and so I needed a lot of volume. So I would make these huge stir fries and just measure out the points for the meat, um, like chicken breast or something, and just make like a whole huge bag or two huge bags of stir fry vegetables, eat the whole thing. Or I had like this pasta primavera I made with tons of vegetables, I carefully measured out one cup of pasta and half a cup of beans and just a little bit of cheese on top and I would eat like this whole huge massive bowl soups like vegetable the free vegetable soup or like a really low point chili now I don't need to eat as much volume I've learned to more eat in a mindful way so um, my go-to meal now is tilapia I always keep it frozen in the freezer vegetables I can do steam fresh vegetables or, or saute them or air fry them and a dollop of pesto I always keep a jar of pesto that gets me my protein my vegetables my healthy fat and it's ready to go Okay, Susan says, I'm seeing after logging food for three weeks, my biggest challenge is snacking. Having a snack isn't bad, but I end up eating too many so much it blows my calorie intake. 
Part of it is that the right snack isn't part of the intake. What snack suggestions do you have that fulfills the afternoon dumps and satisfies the salt and sweet need and is satisfying? So Susan, I gotta be really honest with you here and say you're asking me for the miracle. <laughs> like I can give you some snack ideas, especially when I first started, I mentioned those before, like the Jolly Time popcorn or air popped popcorn and I would do like a kettle corn so it's sweet and salty or you know, like there's different sweet and salty like chips or things like that but I think from your question this isn't really about food it's more about wanting to feel an emo fill an emotional void and the reality is that no food is going to do that there's never going to be enough there's never going to be a perfect food that satisfies that it more comes down to recognizing your thoughts and your feelings that are driving your behavior and I know that is not the easy answer but it's the truth Okay, number nine, it said, this is from Renee, and she says, your comment that whatever you did to lose weight is what will be required to maintain weight loss is scaring me. She's talking about from video, rapid fire video number one. I'm not a yo-yo dieter. Seven months ago, I decided being 100 pounds overweight my whole adult life was over. I've lost 70 pounds by eating 1,000 calories a day. I can't imagine doing such a restrictive diet the rest of my life. Three exclamation points. What do I do midstream for a life sustainable food plan? Well, first of all, Renee, congratulations, 70 pounds. Like, oh my gosh, that's huge. But I really feel concerned for you because I don't want you to gain this back. This is really, you did something really, really hard. So I think the fact that you want to pivot now midstream is very, very smart because you're right. Nobody can live on a thousand calories a day. Maybe some really person who's under five feet tall, but, um, most of us can't. Most women can't live under 1,200 calories, and honestly, I think more than that, 14, 1,600 for most of us, even 2,000 is not unheard of at all. Um, a lot of us, when we go on diets, we tend to undereat, but then we just overeat later to compensate for it. This is a mistake I've made. So what I want you to do, um, Renee, is I can put a link, and I think I might have already shared this with you, but how to find your maintenance calories. Spend two weeks finding your maintenance calories and then take a small deficit, like a 10% deficit um, for your daily calories so that you are losing weight but not at such a drastic way that you can't maintain. Because what's the point of losing it if you can't um, do something that's maintainable? And then number 10 is from Mary. She says, thanks, Sarah. I really enjoyed this, but I do have one question. When you eat something that your husband brings that one of your church members made, how are you able to count it in your daily points? Meaning what points value do, we, do you put on it? And then um, Rentha also asked a very similar question, so I'm going to put them together. She said, I cook most of my meals, and putting each ingredient in the app takes so long, and I don't think the calorie count is correct since I'm not a measurer. Right, so ladies, what I want you to do is just estimate. It's totally fine. If you go into my fitness pal, they have a huge, like if you put in apple pie, you're going to get a huge list. You're going to get everything from like six points to 26 points. Just take the middle or take something that you think is close. Like if it's a restaurant pie and you know this is like a cheesecake factory size pie, you know, maybe you're going to go more toward the 20. If you know that it was made with low fat ingredients, you know, home cooked and you're having a very small portion, maybe you're going to go more toward the six. But, you know, just go somewhere in the middle. A piece of pie, I'd put like 14, 15 points, somewhere similar in there for calories. I don't know. I don't know off the top of my head, but maybe 400 calories. So we would so much rather that you track consistently then you worry too much about tracking accurately. Just keep doing it over and over. There is definitely a time and place for putting a recipe in and finding the exact points sometimes or calories because that's a good, um, it will teach you. It will teach you a lot about the calories or points in your food and sometimes it's a really good wake up call. So it's definitely something you wanna do once in a while but most of the time, just estimate. It's totally fine, just estimate because you're going to get so much better at it as you go. Okay, that was rapid fire. How did I do? 10 questions in 10 minutes. If you have other weight loss questions, you can put them in the comments below because I've got enough questions that I'll at least do one more video, if not a couple more. This is a lot of fun. So just a quick rem reminder that the Weight Watchers Toolkit is on sale right now. If you're watching this video live, the 25th and 26th is 50% off with the coupon code. And please check out Faithful Finish Lines 2.0 membership where we teach women how to lose weight with keeping Christ at the center of their weight loss. I'm Sarah with The Holy Mess and Faithful Finish Lines. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.